Our next presentation comes from Lexigen, Stefan Amirs, uh, SLAMSeq, Thiolinked Alkylation for the Metabolic Sequencing of RNA. Thank you very much. Uh, so I want to start off by thanking also the organizers and Lexigen for the ability uh, to present our data here. So um, what I would like to do today is to introduce you to a novel uh, gene expression uh, profiling method that we've developed um, that adds a novel dimension to um, standard gene expression uh, profiling uh, analysis uh, by next generation sequencing, and that's the dimension of time. And therefore, it enables detailed insights into the regulation of gene expression at the transcriptional and the post-transcriptional level. And we refer to this approach as SLAMSeq. So uh, gene expression profiling by high-throughput sequencing has really revolutionized, as you all know, the way we can associate distinct gene expression profiles to certain cellular states, um, enabling us to generate molecular entry points to understand the function of genes in uh, physiological and pathophysiological situations. And uh, gene expression uh, profiling really does so by uh, delivering information on the relative abundance of, gene uh, of, of uh, the, the RNA species uh, at a given time point inside the cell. What it does not do is to give us any information about how this gene expression profile is actually established. That means the rates at which each of these transcripts is produced and turned over. But it's actually this information that provides us with detailed insights into the regulation of gene expression, both at the transcriptional as well as at the post-transcriptional level. And to provide access to this kinetics information, we have uh, developed SLAMSeq, which uh, uh, enables us to do a time-resolved RNA sequencing using standard uh, RNA sequencing uh, protocols. So uh, how does it work? Um, we are employing um, well-established metabolic RNA labeling approaches using the nucleotide analog 4 uridine that, when added to cells in culture, uh, is readily taken up by cells and incorporated into newly transcribed RNA. So in a pulse or in a pulse chase setting, one can now um, uh, isolate total RNA um, and then perform a chemical modification reaction uh, which modifies the thiol group in 4 uridine, which made, makes it recognizable by the reverse transcriptase step in the library preparation uh, a protocol where the reverse transcriptase will now misincorporate a G across chemically modified 4 uridine, enabling a readout of labeled RNA transcripts as T to C conversions in high throughput sequencing datasets. So the key steps here in this protocol are, first of all, a chemical modification of 4 uridine, where we employ uracetamide, which uh, covalently attaches a carboxyamido methyl group at the thiol group, um, uh, therefore modulating the base pairing capacity of 4 uridine, therefore enabling uh, at, at very high efficiency, uh, so we have 95% conversion efficiency in a treatment of less than 15 minutes under optimized conditions, where, uh, which does not affect, obviously, or an integrity or stability. Um, and uh, this uh, chemical modification is read out by the reverse transcriptase in any of uh, the standard RNA library preparation protocols, um, where uh, when RT passes this modification, we get a quantitative misincorporation of uh, an, a G across chemically modified 4 thiol U, resulting in a T to C conversion. We have also established a bioinformatic pipeline, which we refer to as digital unmasking of nucleotide conversions in KMERS, that facilitates the analysis of high throughput sequencing datasets by enabling to uncover T2C conversion containing transcripts. If you had a chance to visit the poster number 118, you were able to talk to Thomas, uh, uh, Tobias Neumann, a uh, bioinformatician who co developed uh, the DUNK pipeline. Uh, otherwise, please visit us at the Lexogen uh, um, suite uh, to get more information on both SLAMSIG as well as, um, as, as uh, the bioinformatic um, uh, pipeline. So uh, SLAMSIG is available uh, through the Lexogen platform since um, uh, late last year uh, as a SLAMSIG Explorer kit, which enables to optimize labeling conditions in the cell type of interest, uh, and as a SLAMSIG Kinetics kit, uh, where we distinguish between an anabolic RNA labeling kit, which enables to uh, determine RNA synthesis kinetics to investigate transcriptional gene regulation, as well as RNA processing kinetics, and a catabolic RNA labeling kit, which enables to investigate RNA transcript stabilities uh, to investigate post-transcriptional gene regulation. 
So as I mentioned, uh, this is not a sequencing approach. This is an add-on approach. So it's compatible with any standard RNA library preparation protocol. Uh, we uh, have very good experiences looking at RNA pol 2 transcripts, so mRNAs, using the Guanseq mRNA 3 prime end sequencing approach, which provides a very rapid uh, workflow uh, and cost-effective RNA sequencing with uh, simplified bioinformatics analysis. Um, and particularly in the context of SLAMSeq, the SLAMSeq approach it facilitates the recovery of TC conversion containing reads because of the high coverage of the short region at the 3 prime end of transcripts, which facilitates uh, recovery of these transcripts. So in the uh, rest of the talk, I would like to illustrate uh, to you how we can use SLAMSeq uh, to, um, uh, to, to uh, understand transcriptional gene regulation and post-transcriptional gene regulation. So first of all, I want to focus on profiling, using SLAMSeq to profile direct transcriptional responses. And that is really a recurring uh, problem in biological systems because defining direct targets of transcription regulators that are modulated by their activity upon drug treatment is critical both for understanding um, uh, the basic cellular function of these transcription factors, but also for therapy development. And that is really becoming more relevant uh, lately since epigenetic regulators uh, are emerging as accessible entry points for targeted cancer therapy as exemplified, for example, by the recent results on uh, bad bromodomain inhibitors. So you may argue, in principle, this is a very straightforward approach to define direct targets of um, uh, transcription inhibitors by just using standard RNA sequencing. Um, one just has to define the right time point of when to perform uh, uh, sequencing. But in fact, it's not that simple because uh, there is actually no right time to perform uh, uh, differential gene expression analysis. Because if uh, one does this early, uh, then the results are heavily biased in terms uh, by, by a half-life biases. So that means um, uh, if uh, um, early after drug treatment one performs standard RNA sequencing analysis, then one can identify instable primary targets but not stable primary targets. So it depends on the uh, transcript stability, whether one can efficiently uncover them by differential gene expression or not. In contrast, when one does late uh, time points, then um, uh, the results are severely contaminated by secondary effects. Um, uh, and, and this is really aggravated by the fact that um, uh, short-lived transcripts are strongly enriched for transcription factors. So that uh, the, the, the change in uh, transcription factors early on will then, of course, amplify uh, secondary effects uh, and therefore does not enable to identify primary targets. Uh, this uh, is further um, uh, illustrated also by uh, the problem uh, that uh, global effects cannot readily be measured using standard RNA sequencing approaches unless spikings are used. So how can we use SLAMSIC to fix this? Um, this we have approached in collaboration with, um, with uh, the lab of Johannes Zuber at the Institute of Molecular Pathology at the IMP, uh, who have, uh, um, who have uh, optimized uh, an anabolic RNA labeling approach where we basically use up on drug treatment um, where we wait for the full extent of the drug um, response to take place. Uh, a short labeling time um, of uh, for thiu treatment, um, which is short, uh, which is long enough to um, uh, detect uh, de novo transcription, but short enough uh, to not run into secondary transcription effects. So under unperturbed condition, this enables us to look at uh, more than 6,000 uh, uh, genes in terms of their transcriptional output uh, that can vary dramatically in terms of their half-life from very stable, uh, so a half-life of 36 hours, down to um, less than half an hour. And here you can see that one of the prominent uh, transcription factors associated with cancer, MUC, has a very short half-life uh, illustrating the problem that I mentioned before. So having this uh, basic setup established, we can now uh, look into uh, drug treatment as uh, um, an initial setup. We use CDK9 inhibition, CDK9, uh, a cyclin-dependent kinase that is globally required for releasing POL2 from pausing into productive elongation. Therefore, inhibition will cause global shutdown of transcription. We then uh, perform uh, the um, anabolic uh, labeling and uh, a SLAMSeq. We use, again, GUANSeq um, uh, mRNA 3 prime sequencing and the Illumina um, platform. Here you can see what is observed at steady state, so conventional RNA sequencing approach, where we see that basically up on CDK9 inhibition, we do not see much change happening except for 
um, the very short-lived transcript of uh, MYC, where we see a reduction by um, close to uh, uh, twofold. Um, and uh, this is also observed globally, so most genes do not change um, in, in the range of uh, twofold up or down. However, when we perform SLAMSeq, and this is done at the same time, so one can measure both steady state as well as de novo transcription, then we can see compared to control, we can see a drastic release, uh, decrease in uh, de novo transcription uh, across um, the different uh, half-lives of uh, the transcripts, so irrespective of half-life. And this is also observed here again, looking globally into transcriptional output. So um, SLAMSEQ uh, also defines specific transcriptional responses to drug treatments. Here you can see as an example, uh, the BET inhibitor JQ1, um, where again in gray you can see changes in steady state, so, um, so uh, standard RNA sequencing, where we identify 19 uh, primary targets that are differentially regulated um, uh, in, in, in this approach. And these 19 targets are severely biased in terms of their half-life, so they're very short-lived transcripts, even if we increase uh, or decrease the, the cutoff for a fold uh, change, uh, we can see that this uh, bias does not change dramatically. However, when we look at um, uh, transcriptional output using SLAMSeq, then we can see that we can expand this target list of primary targets to 398 involving the 19 that we identified um, at steady state, and we entirely lose the biases for short-lived transcripts. So really uh, uh, showcasing um, uh, how we can uh, apply SLAMSeq for transcriptional output measurement up on uh, transcriptional perturbation. So we envision that this approach may be really um, uh, revolutionizing the way we can uh, do approaches such as uh, drug target fingerprinting, um, where we, uh, which is illustrated here, where we can target uh, different um, uh, aspects of an, a signaling pathway, either upstream or in two branches downstream, then perform SLAM-seq measurements to measure directly uh, uh, transcriptional output. So the effect of uh, these uh, drug treatments on transcriptional output, where we can see that only um, uh, co-inhibition of the two downstream branches clusters in a principal component analysis nicely with upstream inhibition, but not uh, uh, individual inhibition of either of the two branches or the DMSO control. So we think that uh, this will be really powerful um, uh, and, uh, to use the scalable approach to, to uh, perform uh, approaches such as drug target fingerprinting. So I've shown you now how we can use SLAMSeq to measure transcriptional responses. What about post-transcriptional regulation, so RNA transcript stability? So for this, we can use a catabolic RNA labeling approach where we um, label RNA for 12 hours. So we basically saturate uh, for thio accumulation in, in uh, transcripts and then perform a chase um, where we add uh, an unlabeled uridine and, and uh, take a, a different time points, um, uh, total RNA, uh, and then perform a slam seek using, again, the guan seek uh, approach. Uh, and, and, and here we are uncovering basically old transcripts. The, w uh, the reason why we do catabolic uh, RNA labeling is that we need uh, lower sequencing depth to uncover uh, the label transcripts. Uh, here we are using standards uh, about 10 million uh, reads, um, which allows us to look at uh, uh, more than 8,000 transcripts in terms of their transcript stability. When we do this in mouse embryonic stem cells, here you can see three uh, screenshots um, of, of, of three genetic loci, where we zoom into the three prime end of these transcripts. We, again, we use quantic three prime end sequencing. At steady state, we see no changes occurring as expected because we are working under unperturbed conditions here. But when we look at TC conversion containing reads, we see a transcript specific decrease in signal, which we can quantify uh, relative to steady state to, um, uh, to get insights into transcript half-lives. Here you can see a primary microRNA transcript has a very short half-life because it's immediately processed in the nucleus and subjected to degradation. SOX2, a transcription factor, also has short half-life, uh, whereas an, an, um, an, an um, housekeeping transcript, RPL10A, has a very long half-life. We can do this not only for individual transcripts, but also globally for more than 8,000 transcripts, showing an average half-life in mouse embryonic stem cells uh, of 4.2 hours when normalized to cell cycle. Um, the further advantage of using QuantSeq in this uh, context is that we can use it either from specific RNA stabilities. Um, so QuantSeq measures, again, the three prime end tags of mRNAs. Uh, in contrast to RNA-seq, where one cannot differentiate three prime isoforms, Guanxi can, and we can therefore also derive kinetic information on transcript stabilities using um, looking at different three prime isoforms, which can have dramatically different half-lives, as shown here in this example, where the shorter 
transcript has an, uh, um, more than uh, five times, uh, is more than five times more stable than the, sh uh, the longer transcript. So to summarize, I've shown you uh, um, how um, we have developed SlamSeq time -resolved, uh, for time-resolved RNA sequencing. Uh, SlamSeq enables the direct quantification of metabolically labeled RNA by sequencing by inducing T2C conversions, and we provide a bioinformatic pipeline that enables to uncover these in high-throughput sequencing data sets. Um, uh, this is an approach that is compatible in principle with any RNA sequencing library preparation protocol. Uh, it's simple, robust, and scalable. Um, and and, uh, and, and um, as I mentioned, we, we developed a bioinformatics pipeline along with this uh, that is um, available. Um, there are two approaches that I've introduced, anabolic RNA labeling, which enables to measure transcriptional output and RNA processing, and a catabolic RNA labeling approach that enables to measure RNA degradation. Uh, and with this, um, I would like to thank the people involved, um, uh, especially uh, Veronika Herzog, a postdoc in the lab, uh, supported by Pooja Bhatt and Brian Reichholf, two PhD students. The transcriptional output measurements was a very successful collaboration with um, Johannes Zuber's lab at the IMP, specifically Matthias Muhar, a very talented PhD student. Tobias Neumann and Philipp Reschnieder are two uh, bioinformaticians who developed the DUNK pipeline. Uh, and um, uh, down here is uh, the funding that I would like to acknowledge and thank you very much for your attention. If you want to know more about uh, this approach, please come and visit us at the Lexogen Suite downstairs. Thank you very much. Question. Um, it's a twofold question. Mm -hmm. What is it that SlamSeq give than GrowSeq will not give you? Mm -hmm. Number one. Uh, and number two is, can we do SlamSeq on primary tissue? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, first question. Uh, it's uh, clearly uh, complementary to to um, um, other uh, transcription output uh, measurements like GrowSeq. Uh, the only difference is that it's much more simple. So you do not need to uh, do any perturbations to the cells. You do metabolic labeling, and that is sufficient. So it's scalable approach. Right? So that's the major difference here. Much more simple and scalable. Um, the second question was: so Can you do it on primary, primary tissue? Primary tissue, so we have um, looked at various cell lines. Primary tissue, we have not looked so far. Um, but I, I think, you know, for thai U, metabolic labeling is around for quite some time. I'm sure that for the, the, what, what you're looking for, there will be some data available in the literature. Quick question, please, quick answer. First of all, wonderful talk. Thank you. And second, have you done any work to establish whether the 4SU has an impact on RNA metabolism? So could it alter transcription, translation, mm -hmm. degradation? Yes. Yes. So there is, uh, in fact, some reports that uh, 4th IU uh, can have um, uh, some negative consequences for cells at high concentrations. And these negative aspects are arising from uh, problems in rRNA biogenesis, so that is reported. Therefore, um, we have introduced an insanity check um, that we recommend for everybody uh, to do before using SlamSeq, and that is a, t a careful titration experiment in the cell type of interest that allow you to determine uh, whether these negative effects occur. So we do uh, cell viability assays after 24 or 48 hours, so long labeling times. Uh, and we work at uh, conditions so for thiol concentrations where we see no detrimental effects, and in these conditions, we do not see any effects on gene expression. 